we're going to talk about nuclear stability and the strong nuclear force. So I put this in here, holding the protons together. We'll understand why in a second. So what is some evidence for the strong nuclear force? Well, let's first of all talk about what's going on. I mean, um, first of all, the fact that a nucleus can stay together is evidence for it. That's because, again, uh, we mentioned this before, but just to put it together. So nucleus has protons and neutrons. Now, neutrons don't attract or repel, so we can kind of ignore them. But each proton, keep in mind, if you have a proton and you have another proton that's right beside it, shouldn't those two protons feel a repulsive force? And this is, you know... They should feel a force going away from each other. Remember, the nucleus is filled with protons. So this is this electrostatic repulsion. So the question is then, why doesn't the nucleus tear itself apart? Because there is this force. This force really is there. But the reason is because we've sort of, I mean, this is one of the reasons why we have this strong nuclear force, which is short range, but attractive. It keeps the nucleus together. So this thing right here under very short ranges, at least, keep in mind, it's only in the nucleus. But this one here is way, 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 way stronger. Okay, this one here is a strong, strong, strong force here. This is way more. That's what keeps the nucleus together. But it's only short range. At larger, larger ranges, it doesn't work. Then it's um, the weak, uh, sorry, the much weaker electromagnetic repulsion that takes over. So that's why this one, it does repel things. Let's say, like in Rutherford scattering, we've got a positive particle coming in near a uh, positive nucleus. Of course, as it comes closer, it will get repelled. But in the nucleus itself, this is the strong force that's holding together the nucleus. So what's some evidence for it? Like I just said, Rutherford scattering, where you have these alpha particles that are coming in and they're being deflected, some of them even coming back, for example. So this Rutherford scattering, it does break down at high energies. In other words, when you get this initial kinetic energy, this initial alpha's kinetic energy, when it's really big, in other words, it's something around 28 mega electron volts is where it gets interesting. So if it's under that, then this actually happens. You know, it comes back like this, sure. But if it's larger than that, so in other words, if the alpha is greater than around 28 MeV, this doesn't work anymore. And the explanation should be reasonable. It's that, hey, as you get bigger energies, does it make sense that you're getting R smaller and smaller and smaller? Do you notice? Like, so then you know, R gets smaller. And as you get smaller and smaller and smaller R values, does that make sense? You're actually coming closer to this nuclear force, this strong nuclear force. So that's why actually, you know, the fact that Rutherford scattering breaks down at these is actually a good sign. That means, yeah, there probably is really a strong nuclear force. Now we also have something else, uh, the binding energy curve. Um, this Remember, we've got A and Z here. It's so a mass number A here, or a nu or nucleon number, you could call it. This is the binding energy per nucleon. And if you remember the curve, right, roughly goes like this, something like that right there. Whoops, except I did uh, back the last part of it. It shouldn't curve upwards. It should just keep going like this here. So the very fact that it's nearly constant, so this one here, it goes down very, very slowly. But it's, you know, nearly constant. That's also evidence of this strong nuclear force. Let's go a little bit deeper, though, with the stability of nuclides. Remember nuclides, those are just, you know, again, just to remind you, any nuclide is anything we write like this, X with an A and a Z like this. So if we're writing not the atomic uh, mass number, sorry, so not, not the number of nucleons, if we actually just consider the number of neutrons, if we just consider the number of neutrons, and this is the number of protons, remember, that's what this is? This is number of protons. This is actually the number of protons plus neutrons. So if instead we're just focusing on neutrons and here we're focusing on protons, so we've got number of neutrons here and number of protons here. Well, for something to be stable, a nucleus doesn't likely decay. That's what I mean by stable. Okay, it you know unstable ones they'll decay on their own. If it's unstable, just let it be. It'll decay to something else. If it's stable, it doesn't want to do that easily. So up to around z equals 15 to 20. So let's just decide that's you know somewhere between uh, here and here. So somewhere around 15 to 20. So that means the you know the first uh, so up from the uh, from he uh, hydrogen for example all the way up to about the 20th element or so. If we make a line like this right here, it roughly follows this line right here. In other words, this one right here, this is this line of stability. So as you go to larger z values, 
So what remember, Z means the number of protons. As you add more protons to the nucleus, turns out you're going to need more neutrons in there to keep it stable. So in other words, it doesn't just follow this line, it's not equal. It's going to have to be, you're going to need even more neutrons. So I don't know, maybe it goes something like this right here. So do you notice then? So that's where it deviates from that line. And by the way, that line is uh, N equals Z. In other words, you know, if you think about a straight line graph, this is the line Y equals X. See, this is the Y value, this is the X. So this is like the straight line here where it's equal number of N and Z. So do you notice here it goes up, it deviates from there. So why? Well, that's because as you add more and more protons, remember as you get larger Z values here past this 15 to 20, as you add more of those, you're adding more protons. And remember, protons are repulsive. You know, they repel each other, these protons. So because of that, then, you've got to add more neutrons to add more strong nuclear force, this attractive force here, to keep it stable. So that's really the reason, and I think that's that's actually a good piece of uh, information to know about stability. Okay, so stability is all about, you know, things not wanting to decay. So... We've learned about stability of nuclides, and we've also learned about different forms of evidence for the strong nuclear force.